Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. We are tracking damage across the area after last night's tornado outbreak. We have team coverage from some of the hardest hit areas. A UK football player goes to court to answer to a rape charge. What a judge ordered him to do. And the first person diagnosed with Ebola in the U.S. has died. We'll show you what's being done to make sure that no one else gets sick. WKYT News at 5 starts now. Thanks for being here with us. Late this afternoon, we have learned that authorities have now ruled three deaths as weather-related. They come from a crash that happened yesterday afternoon in Scott County. A father, son, and another man were killed on Kentucky 227 as yesterday's storms hit. Investigators say rain caused the crash. The storms also spawned six confirmed tornadoes across the area. There was one each in Bourbon, Scott, Harrison, and Owen counties, along with two in Bath County. Here's a closer look from Sky First at what's left along Vine Street in Paris. You can see how the tornado destroyed one home and damaged dozens of others. WKYT Sam Smith begins our top story team coverage from Bourbon County. Yeah, the fire department reports 15 to 20 severely damaged structures in this area of Vine Street in Paris. Now take a look at what the tornado did to this area. Trees were knocked down, walls and roofs destroyed, power lines were on the ground. It all created a mess and forced people living here to be evacuated. Those impacted were given the chance to stay in a hotel on behalf of the Red Cross. Most people chose to stay with friends and family. There was one reported injury. A woman was sucked out of her house. She landed outside on her porch. She walked away with only stitches in her lip. A survey team from the National Weather Service toured the damage here, looking at the way the mud spattered onto the homes and the direction trees fell. They determined the tornado was an EF1 that touched down three times in the county. Anytime we have a collision with the warm air and the cool air, you get this type of an event. And it's not unusual to get a tornado in October, November. The National Weather Service survey team says the tornado was about 50 to 70 yards wide. In Bourbon County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And those living in the blocked off area of Vine Street are now allowed to return home. It didn't take the National Weather Service long to determine a tornado touched down in Scott County. An EF-1 caused damage to buildings near Stampin' Ground. Sky First flew over the barn, which uh, this barn rather, that collapsed under the tornado's strong winds. WKYT's Jerrica Insco continues our team coverage live now with a closer look at damage in Scott County. Jerrica? Our crews have been in and out of Scott County since those storms pushed through yesterday here in Scott County. And now it's confirmed that an EF1 tornado did touch down here in Scott County and is to blame for all of this damage. Now, where we are right now is the community of Stamping Ground, where homes are left damaged like this one. Trees are down, barns blown away, and houses damaged just like this one. But power has been restored after power lines were also knocked down when that tornado came through and the emergency management director says surveying the damage this morning didn't take long because they were using a drone which is a video camera that flew over the damage now that drone belongs to a captain at the scott county fire department and we are working to get a copy of that video we were able to get a good uh you know overview of everything from you know from the sky which really helped because when you're walking, you can't see the forest for the trees, so they say. And uh, so when you're up in the air, you can obviously see a lot, and you can see the true path of the storm. The emergency management director tells us that the path of that tornado was about two miles long here in Stamping Ground, and right now they are looking at damage, just a small amount in Georgetown. Reporting live in Scott County, Jerrica Insco, WKYT. Jerrica, thank you. We are told the winds with the Scott County tornado were on the higher end of the EF1 scale. A National Weather Service team has now ruled straight line winds are to blame for damage in Maysville. Winds knocked over semis during yesterday's storms. They also took the roof off of a gas station and knocked over pumps. While the damage looks bad, no one suffered any serious injuries. 
Well, this uh, severe weather that we saw gave way to a beautiful day out there across our area. But the drier weather won't stay with us for long. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, think of today as a break in the action from yesterday's tornadoes to where we're going over the next several days. That is into a very wet period throughout the bluegrass state of Kentucky. Take a look back at that Tuesday tornado outbreak with six confirmed tornadoes so far and look at the clustering. And if you were with us yesterday, we were tracking those storms across these same general areas, one right after another. These are mainly on the weekend of the tornado scale, but still Anything that's 100 miles per hour or greater is going to cause some damage, and that's basically what we were seeing with many of those EF1s throughout the region. EF0, by the way, touching down a little earlier uh, yesterday, one of the first tornado touchdowns in Owen County. Now, where are we now? We look good. Upper 60s and low 70s with a mostly sunny sky throughout central and eastern Kentucky. That's a good looking shot. It's a good looking live first alert defender that unfortunately will not stay that way. So, our front that caused yesterday's storms is off to our south. What will happen? All the moisture that is pooling to the west and southwest of this front is going to lift back to the north and northeast. That will open up the floodgates, if you will, no pun intended there, to a lot of deep tropical moisture. A soggy setup is ahead of us. Rounds of rain and thunderstorms start to show up tomorrow and carry us right on through the entire seven day forecast. When I come back in a few minutes, we'll break down the potential for high water and show you some rainfall numbers from our computer models. It'll make you do a double take. More on that in just a second. A UK football player accused of rape made his first court appearance today. Lexington police arrested Lloyd Tubman yesterday, less than a week after the alleged attack. As WKYT's Jordan Velines shows us, the hearing comes as we learn new details in the case. During today's video arraignment in Fayette County District Court, Lloyd Tubman pled not guilty to charges of first degree rape. Yesterday, he was indefinitely suspended from the UK football team in connection with those charges. The incident in which the charge stems from took place on October 2nd. According to the arrest citation, that's when Tubman visited one of his acquaintances at her dorm room on UK's campus, where she agreed to check him in as her guest. Once in the dorm room, the citation states that a verbal altercation between the two escalated into a physical one, during which Tubman allegedly forced the victim to engage in sexual conduct. The victim called 911 shortly after Tubman left, and it's described as being visibly upset while crying and shaking when police arrived. Shortly after Tubman was arrested, head coach Mark Stoops addressed the incident at a press conference. It was very difficult uh, to meet with Lloyd and meet with his mother. And, uh, you know, to see, uh, again, somebody in, in your program hurting. And uh, I, feel, I feel for all parties. It's uh, obviously not a situation that anybody wants to be in. Coming up at 6, hear more about today's court proceedings as well as what's next for Tubman. In Lexington, Jordan Velines, WKYT. Tubman's preliminary hearing is set for October 23rd. The first person diagnosed with Ebola in the U.S. has died. The hospital where he's being treated announced his death this morning. It comes as the federal government put new guidelines in place to prevent any more cases. Omar Villafranca has the details from Dallas. Thomas Eric Duncan is now the first person in the United States to die from Ebola. The 42-year-old Liberian man passed away after being hospitalized at Texas Health Presbyterian in Dallas since late last month. The hospital released a statement expressing its condolences and saying Ebola is a disease that attacks the body in many ways. We'll continue every effort to contain the spread of the virus and protect people from this threat. Duncan was originally sent home when he first came to the hospital. By the time he was admitted four days later, his condition had worsened. The CDC has guidelines for handling the remains of Ebola patients because the virus can still be transmitted. Only specially trained people wearing protective gear should handle the remains. The body should be cremated or buried immediately in an airtight casket. Ebola concerns are triggering new airport screenings. Federal officials announced they will start checking passengers from West Africa for fever in Chicago, New York, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta. These five airports are the destination of 94 uh, percent of individuals who travel to the United States from the three countries that are currently affected by Ebola right now. 
The White House says on average about 150 passengers from the affected countries travel into those airports and that they still have confidence in screening procedures overseas. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Dallas. The first additional Ebola screenings will be at Kennedy International Airport in New York this weekend. Dr. Rice Leach with the Lexington and Fayette County Health Department discussed Ebola with our Bill Bryant in a taping of Kentucky Newsmakers. He says Lexington has proper measures in place to deal with any potential cases. City leaders met to discuss preparedness earlier this week. Dr. Leach says one potential improvement did come out of that related to tracking anyone who might have been exposed. We concluded that at some point we need to do training for other people to help us collect information on people that the health department would in turn uh, follow up on. You can hear Dr. Leach talk about Ebola and why you shouldn't be as worried about it as other illnesses. That's on Kentucky Newsmakers. It airs Sunday at 6 a.m. on WKYT and at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. Two Kentucky children head home from the hospital after being injured in a drunk driving crash. Their mother talks about their recovery. Experts think Americans will spend more on the holidays this year. How will the prediction affect the deals that stores offer? The answer for you in Better Living. And a warning for investors. Trusting the wrong person can cost you. We have the Consumer Alert on WKYT News at 530. Police arrest a man accused of having child pornography. Our county by county coverage begins in Boyd County, where 37 year old Sean Graham was captured this morning. Police say they found the images on computers they took from Graham's Ashland home. He's charged with one count of possessing child pornography. A Taylor County man faces charges accused of trying to hire someone to kill a woman. Police say Timothy Davis threatened to kill the woman while in the Taylor County Jail and tried to hire other inmates to do it. The Central Kentucky News Journal reports Davis is charged with solicitation of murder and terroristic threatening. Two children left a Louisville hospital this morning more than two weeks after a suspected drunk driver ran over them. The children were with their mother leaving Disney on ice at the Yum Center when it happened. One child suffered a broken leg and pelvis, the other a spinal cord injury. Sarah Needhamer was six months pregnant when she and her children were hit. She had to deliver the baby early. She says her older children will recover, but the baby has brain damage. It's not over. It's going to be a long time before it's over. And it's never going to be over for Nathan. He's never going to be a normal little boy. The driver, Russell Mullins, is charged with DUI and assault. Needhamer hopes the baby can leave the hospital in time for Christmas. The fight against wildfires in California has now turned deadly. An air tanker slammed into a canyon wall in Yosemite National Park, killing the pilot. Officials think he was trying to drop flame retardant on the fire at the time. The crash caused another fire that was visible for miles. I was right up the street here, and uh, I saw the black smoke cloud going up and uh, went out and took pictures immediately. Officials have grounded all air tankers while they investigate. Minnesota Vikings running back Adrian Peterson will stand trial on child abuse charges later this year. A judge set the trial for December 1st yes. during a hearing Lawyer. in Texas today. Peterson is accused of using a you? switch to discipline his four-year-old son. He's on paid leave from the Vikings until the case is resolved. A burglar takes a big tumble and it's all caught on tape. Cameras caught the woman lurking around a home before climbing up on the second story roof. It didn't take her long to take a tumble. Police say it's pretty unusual behavior, even for a burglar. I've never actually seen something so crazy. 50 minutes worth and then climbing on the roof was very bizarre. Police have not yet caught the woman. They believe she might be responsible for other crimes in the area. We continue to track damage from yesterday's tornado outbreak. We'll have more from Harrison and Bath counties on WKYT News at 530. Americans are expected to spend more this holiday season. How that will affect the kind of deals you find in stores. The answer next for you in Better Living.